But Jeff Scott's talents are not limited to Pee Wee. Jeff has performed in theaters and clubs, portraying characters ranging from Sir Rustic to Madam, and even including a Japanese geisha girl. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Ooh, nice hair. Uh, well, I feel a responsibility to only doing uh, the type of work or comedy material that I think Pee Wee would actually do himself. After witnessing one of Jeff Scott's performances, it's easy to see why people leave convinced they have just seen the real Pee Wee. His popularity has grown to the point where he is now accompanied by bodyguards during his personal appearances. The most fun is seeing the kids. Uh, I had one little girl come up and ask me uh, how I got out of the television. And that's when you realize, you know, that it's real magic time. And that's, that's the most fun, just the, seeing the expression on the kids' faces. But there was a call seconds before I go on stage. And it was the head of EP. And he's like, Jeff, are you on stage? No, no, don't go on. You can't go on. You can't go on. You can't go on. So again, Pee Wee's people had uh, been like, hey, wait a second. We negotiated in Ohio. And now this guy is in L.A. or in San oh, Diego. Oh, and that was pretty much you it. Know? Yeah. And in San Diego. And, oh, and I still got to do it. I did two to eight shows a day, six days a week. They wanted me to work seven. I'm like, I did seven for you in San Diego. Yeah. And that was a 10-minute pre-show and a 20-minute stage show, twice a night, seven nights a week. Uh, finished up the San Diego park. They had salt. They actually, while they were working it out, I got put into the high dive show. There's a nerdy character in the high dive. <sighs> And they're like, do you know how to swim? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a pretty good swimmer. And they're like, do you know how to dive? And I'm like, no. And they're like, good, you don't need to. Come on, you're going to drive this boat, and you're going to go underwater, and you're going to oh, up this thing on fire. And like, <laughs> wow. It's, it's, it was pretty, actually, it was really, really fun, but scary as shit. You know, I mean, because the, 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 the stunt role was always one of the professional divers. So once again... I was taking a role from somebody. So as this big star from the Ohio Sea World, I was the head of the Summer Nights program. They sent me all over Ohio promoting all, all those are piles of press kits over there from Sea World that had all my, you know, promotional stuff. <laughs> well, that was the mime stuff. But there I am playing around with Shamu. Now, were you still doing Pee Wee when, when he got in trouble and when basically it all... No. The Pee Wee care you had already no, finished? Fortunately. Although I did have bodyguards for my uh <laughs> my, my buddies. Wow. Were, were bodyguards of mine. Yeah, and then uh Yeah, this stacks. is all my Yeah, just all my stacks sea of world, press kits. SeaWorld stuff. Yeah, somewhere in here there's a whole thing on the oh that's my script. Wow. <laughs> I didn't cool. realize I had the script in there. Yeah, and somewhere there'll be one that's like real. Oh my god! I love that about you. You're such a historian with it, with everything that you collect. That it, it's great that you kept all your own stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. I thought you want to know what the smelliest animal in the park is. It's that. Right there. Smelliest because the uh, food sticks in here, in their uh, oh whiskers. And the whiskers. Yeah. The whiskers. Meanest animal in the park is the uh, otter. Evil little part. Sea lions, great. And as a matter of fact, as a mine, they would always had sort of a, uh, uh, a, a opening day uh, tribute that I didn't know about, or not a tribute, but like getting jumped in. So when you do your first sea lion and sh or mime show at the Seal and Otter show, where it's like 20 minutes before, you just, you know, mime walking around, just messing, screwing with people. Although, I was always more like a Shields and Yarnell, I'll, I'll entertain you. I was not Marcel Marcel, look at this art, and I was not the type of guy that I'm going to be a smart ass and yeah. screw with you. Although, sometimes I'd do silly things like grab some lady's purse and walk all the way to the other side of the stadium and give it to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. You know, silly things like that. But then, of course, on the first day, they're like, ladies and gentlemen, our SeaWorld mime has been Jeff Scott. And you come out on the stage where it's all slippery and everything, and you take your bow not knowing that they've sent a sea, sea lion out, and you get pushed into yeah. the tank of smelly, pissy salt water. <laughs> and there were a couple times, and I don't know how they did it. I'm standing, waiting to do a cue, and I look. And here's Clyde or Seymour, one of the sea lions, they've gotten quietly over, and he's up on the wall and just kisses you in the face. And they're, when they're standing up, I mean, they're like, you know, six feet yeah. four, they're huge. Anyway, it, you know, it was a dream. I wanted to be a vet when I was a kid. 
I'm allergic to any animal with fur or feathers. <laughs> okay, I'll be a dolphin trainer at SeaWorld. Those are all really educated marine biology students. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I'll be a mime and I'll be in theater. But then, for me, this whole thing came around to the SeaWorld, you know, and because I just took the chance of going to San Diego, it was uh, a good deal. Now, actually, I did get a call about doing something for Pee Wee uh, when he did the uh, live show at the Nokia. What, two or three years ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Which is great. I've got autographs from all the uh, actors from that and then from on Broadway. Oh, and I also acquired this. And I, I've gotten to be sort of friendly with Lynn Stewart, Miss Yvonne, and George McGrath. Yeah. Who was the fish and the countess. Look, I got a real Pee Wee Herman crew jacket on that sale. That's so cool. On eBay. I love the guy who created all the... All the gimmicks in the art, Wayne White. Oh, he's so. Did you see that special? I love it. Yeah, he's I didn't one of my favorites. That he also built and you know worked all the puppets and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, and had never done it before. That just kind of like made so him I and figured it out. Well, I'll tell you about the last thing. I'll pull out the uh, the pierce to the resistance. There it is. The suit that <laughs> made me from the poster. A lot of money. Now, you think that that's the suit from the poster. That's not. This is it. Ah, yeah, different shade. This was when, when he did the show at the Nokia. The Nokia, sure, they thought it was a great idea. I knew, Pee Wee, why would you want an impersonator to entertain the audience outside of your show when they're coming to see you? Yeah, show? that's... But they tried booking me, and they're like, yeah, we, Pee Wee's people are all set, and blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm like, crap, i got to find a new suit. So this was... As close as a Prince, uh, was it, I think it's Prince Charles plaid or Prince Prince of Wales plaid. What, did you end up doing it? What happened with no, that? No, no, no. Obviously the PVs people said, hell no. <laughs> Although I went and saw the show. But yeah, this is the... Uh, That's from the poster from Big Top Pee Wee. Uh -huh. Oh, and there's socks in there. Jeff, thank you so much for being on here. I know everybody that watches is going to absolutely love it. Three buttons, by the way. If you're going to impersonate Pee Wee, have only three buttons, not four. We've On this show, we've went to Francis's house. We've went to Pee Wee's house. Oh, really? And uh, about two weeks ago, we were at an event where a guy had built an exact replica of Pee Wee's bike all the way down to the Lion intercom that worked and the oh, honking man. horn and everything. Yeah, so... Well, I have... Uh, we have a Pee Wee fan are, contingent here. Stacks of uh, stuff from uh, when I was uh, doing SeaWorld. I won't open this. Or I'll show you a little one. I just got this recently, which is a fantastic sculpt that wasn't released. But in here, this is, uh, this is a mold of Paul's head from when they did... Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, right. Sort of a rare thing that I got. That, uh, how did you get that? That's so cool. <laughs> little eBay surprise. Thing. I love that kind of stuff. And then, this trunk. That's what? probably the first thing he was in after all the Pee Wee stuff, wasn't it? When that all went down? Yeah. Because yeah. he didn't look anything. He had a beard and long hair and goatee. Oh, right, right. And... He was awesome, too. I have tons of Pee Wee stuff, jackets and toys that I bought at the uh, Backlot uh, Paramount Studios. So I have like 30 copies of the poster. I have all the promotional things that I was on. I was on these standees. I was on this giant... Pepsi Cola fold out that you're not going to get to see that because that's <laughs> you're packed away somewhere. I, literally, yes, I have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. But this is one of my favorite pieces from my collection. Oh, I even have a, an original from uh, 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 who was the, the the photographer that uh, um, that always shot, shot uh, Pee Wee, uh, Herb Ritz. Oh, oh, his, wow. His offices were above uh, the theater that I used to work at. And I, I had seen this picture in uh, uh, Interview Magazine of Pee Wee on a horse dressed up like a cowboy 40 horse. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, you did that, right? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, so you personally Pee Wee? And I said, yeah, I collect all this stuff. And I said, really nice. And he said, well, come here. I've got something for you. Give me a copy of one, one of his original copy printed. Wow. And then not to be outdone. Oh, gee, a million more mini posters. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I have so much stuff. Oh, Pee Wee Bobblehead. Pee Wee Sock. If I can track one down, I'm going to get one. I want you to sign it for me because I collect stuff like that. Yeah, this is... Oh, oh, here. That's why I couldn't find it before. Ah, 
this is my contract for when I did the um, body double for the poster with Ron Smith. So those are, can you see those with the yeah. shininess? That's one of the finished posters where I was flying out of a cannon. Oh, I've never seen that one. Well, no, because they didn't use any of those. Oh, okay. I, and I only snapped two, I wasn't supposed so to. I think the line when I might have seen, or did they not make that? I feel like I've seen something like that. And then these were just tests of me on the set there the day we shot them. That's so cool. But what is thoroughly enjoyable... Oh, there's a letter to his management. No, you can't see his address. <laughs> what, uh, this is one of my favorite things, besides getting to be friends with Miss Yvonne. Lynn is so wonderful. This, season one, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Every single script in the original binder. A friend of mine worked as an animation producer on it. Wow! Kept, so there's that is that's the holy grail of Pee and Call sheets, and as a matter of fact, I saw somebody selling individual scripts from this season, like two fifty per script. Oh, I bet, I and bet. I got all thirteen. Wow. So, you know, with this... Well, that was Lawrence Fishburne. I mean, that was a pretty interesting cast. Oh, yeah. Shot up in a studio where the air conditioning didn't work. And the right. Puppets, they do that on that interview. The puppets were melting. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, so this and, you know, the the actual suit and the shoes. And I've had, you know, Pee Wee and, and uh, uh, Lynn and, and George McGrath uh, very graciously I've sent them stuff and they've autographed them for me. And, That's so cool. You know, so yeah. I've got, like I said, I just pulled out a few boxes. <laughs> At one point, I used to tour. As many fan fests there are, I'm surprised they haven't done a Pee Wee one yet. Because um, yeah. there's like a big Gilbowski one where every year people get together. And... Yeah, even if there was, I couldn't do it now. And, and you know what? I wouldn't. I, I, well, they couldn't stop you from showing up just as a fan dressed as Pee Wee and, and I like the way, like a I cosplay thing, could they? I if I wasn't, you know, working for pay. Right. Yeah. But right now I wouldn't even have the, you know. the interest. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I was like, oh my God, really? Am I going to do that? <laughs> this is like, my suit was when I was a 29 inch waist. <laughs> and now it's like 33. So, you know, I had to find this one, found it down at a thrift store on Fairfax. But uh, this is also my old tie and shirt and stuff. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I should have this. Oh, you know what? I should put the wig on his head. The head bust. <laughs> yeah, that'd be perfect. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and this is my friend. This is Mr. Raspberry. Say hi, Mr. Raspberry. After watching and studying Pee Wee, Jeff realized mastering Pee Wee's movements and facial expressions would be his toughest challenge. Playing over 200 shows at SeaWorld this summer, plus making appearances at parties and nightclubs, Jeff has perfected the movements and mannerisms of Pee Wee Herman. Stop! It's a lot of fun, you know, when you can fool people and make them really believe that they're seeing Pee Wee or meeting him. He's so close to my own style of uh, humor and uh, the mannerisms and everything that it's uh, actually quite easy to turn into Pee Wee. This way, to your seat. Move it. Move it. Hot. Let's go. <laughs> There's an autographed picture from the fish to Jeff. He was also Globy. Oh, that's right. And the flower and the countess. And he wrote the theme song. Do 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, I even. I wonder if I can. Well, guys, I hope you managed to make it through both parts of the Jeff Scott vlog. Personally, I loved it and I didn't think anything needed to be cut out of it. And I wanted to give you guys the option. You could either watch part of it or you could watch all the extras after. It was so cool that he was able to give me the clips of him at SeaWorld and him portraying Pee Wee and all these various different um, aspects. I'm going to have Jeff on again because Jeff has a ton of um, different various items from Ciro's which was a restaurant and now it's the comedy store but back in its day Nat King Cole uh, Frank Sinatra, various people performed there, ate there. He has tons of pictures that he's bought off eBay of the inside, people um, at the, the club on the inside. And he's kind of already done a lot of the work where he's 
taken those pictures and went to the comedy store, found where that spot was and matched them up. And what I want to do is Jeff and I want to go do a walkthrough of the comedy store and show you how Ciro's was once laid out. And then I'll be able to interject those pictures of where we're at in the uh, comedy store and where the pictures are taken. Um, Jeff's going to be on a couple of vlogs because there's a lot of stuff that I find interesting about Jeff. Um, not only the Ciro's thing, but also his dad was a chaplain at Kent State when the Kent State massacre happened. And he has some very interesting takes on that. And, um, and the last thing that Jeff um, is going to be on to talk about, and he's pretty open about it, is Jeff has been living with AIDS for 30 years. And I want to have him explain kind of how he got it, how he's dealt with it, and how he survived with it, because everybody he's ever known that had it has not survived. Um, he's told me this story, and honestly, after we filmed the vlog today, I was there hanging out, just talking, um, Ciro's, and talking about Jeff's life for over an hour. And um, I think it's something that everybody could get something out of, and it's definitely something I want to share with you. So Jeff will be back on a couple of times, and he's such a nice guy that... Um, you know, I know you guys are going to love him. Go friend request him. Um, let him know that you saw him on here and, like, thank him because this is just one of those things he told me in passing one day. You know, one day we're just, I don't even know how it came up. He just said something about, like, oh, yeah, I used to be a Pee Wee impersonator for years and and uh, I made a pretty good living at it and I worked at SeaWorld for years. And I'm like, huh, what? There it is. So, um... This part of the vlog is back on my camera phone just because it takes so long to transfer the files. And um, uh, sorry if the, the quality wasn't that great. Um, I learned that you have to put it on a different setting when you're in kind of a low light indoor area. So I'm still learning the aspects of the camera and I'll get it knocked out. Tomorrow I have something pretty cool planned, but it might get pushed aside if something even cooler comes up. Um, I have one thing I'm definitely thinking like, I could definitely go do this and this would be awesome. Um, but there's something I kind of want to take a risk on and I'm going to make that call in the morning and see if I can make it happen. So until tomorrow, guys, thank you for watching, uh, Days of Jordan the Lion. Live from Hollywood, your pal Jordan signing off. Good night. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, so when did you realize you looked like that other guy? Well, about, uh, 85. Actually, I was in a car accident. My face was put out with a hatchet, you know, all the fire and everything. So I got insurance money, and they said I could have plastic surgery look like Tom Cruise or Pee Wee. And I'm no idiot, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... La, 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 la. So every time we say, A.M. Cleveland... Ah! Everybody's going to kind of scream and yell, huh? They're going to kind of scream and yell and hoop and holler, and we're going to have a great time. Okay, that sounds good. We'll be back with more of... Hey, that's Cleveland!